Hey screen printers, in this week's Made to Make It, I'm actually in my wife's yarn studio at Stitches and More, recording the audio version of Made to Make It. Yarn makes a good sound dampener, by the way. So I'm recording it here, and then it's gonna be mixed and mastered, and then uploaded so you guys can all listen to it and enjoy it. I love audiobooks, I don't really read, so hopefully those of you who like audiobooks enjoy this one. I'm actually getting to this section of the book about pricing, and that's actually what we're gonna be talking about in this week's vlog. So let's jump into the computer and talk about the model, but expanded in this week's Made to Make It vlog. The pricing section in the book, Made to Make It, came from this video, How to Price Screen Printing for Profit. That's one of the most popular videos, I think the most popular video on YouTube with almost 50,000 views. Now this video works on what I call a cost plus pricing model because every single shop is different. Your shop's different from your competition shop, your competition shop's different from their shop. So in this video, we're actually gonna take this a step further. Now I would definitely go back and watch this original video because it kind of gives you the basis. And then obviously the book kind of expounds upon that. But we're gonna use a in more in depth model in this vlog. And then you can download this model, which is an Excel format. So we're gonna pop over to Excel. You're gonna download this model from madetomakeabook.com, the resource guide page there, or from the video description on YouTube. So this is an Excel file. Now, if you don't have Excel, you can take the downloaded version and directly upload it into Google Docs and use Sheets. All the, the formulas in the Excel file will come over. So we're gonna start out with a P&L. Now, a profit and loss statement, we're gonna be looking at this specifically in a monthly shot, but you can change this to a yearly or a quarterly shot, no matter how many different ways you wanna look at it. Now, the more data that you have, the more actual accurate numbers that you have. So you're gonna either take your average month, your most recent month, um, a quarter or a year. In this case, we're taking our most recent month. Now, if you don't have these numbers, start tracking them immediately starting next month. You're gonna to wanna to track all your revenue, but you're not gonna just wanna track your revenue as a whole. You're gonna to wanna to track the split of your revenue. So if you're a screen printer, if you do other revenue through embroidery or contracting or uh, promotional products, these would be other revenue. You wanna track your screen print revenue separately and then you you wanna track your cost of goods sold for that print revenue separately as well. So right here in this P&L, you have your revenue, you have your print supplies, and that's taken away from your revenue, adding to your screen print gross profit. Now, if you haven't read a P&L before, it's pretty simple. You have your revenue, less your cost equals gross profit, less your expenses, so all your expenses as a business equals your total net income. So right here, let's kind of walk down. You have these specifically tracked. Now these revenue lines or other revenue lines would then the cost of goods sold would be tracked separately as well. And then you have a breakdown of your total gross profit, 49% gross profit as a shop, and then how much of that was screen print, how much of that was other. Then we have our expenses. So in this shop's scenario for a month, it's $5,000, 1,000 in taxes and insurance, 1,200 rent, 150 for utilities, 300 for phone, 100 for insurance, 750 for the equipment leases, and then other overhead could be anything. Now, obviously these are not real numbers. So you'd wanna go in there and actually put in your numbers over the course of a month. And once again, you could change that to a year or a quarter. So here we're actually gonna take this a step further so we can actually use the data that we have on our P&L to price effectively for a job. So right here we have our specifically direct costs to print. So these are our direct overhead costs. So how much employees are we using for screen printing? And our first one, this is what you're paying them. This is how many hours they worked over the course of that month. And this is their burden in screen print. So how many total hours they worked, how many they worked in screen print. Their second one, however, is total dollars, um, total hours worked, but only half in screen print or 48% in screen print. So this gives you your overhead per garment or per screen printing. Now you're gonna plug in how many shirts you printed over the course of that month. So let's say the shop printed 6,000 shirts over the course of this month. It's gonna give you your average revenue per garment. It's gonna give you your average cost per garment. It's gonna give you your average print supply per garment. It's gonna give you your average minutes per garment. It's gonna give you how many garments you're printing in an hour of human time. And then it's going to give you your average overhead per garment. And then it's gonna give you your profit per garment. So this is the actual information that we're gonna be using to come up with our own calculations on a specific job. So then we're gonna put in some job criteria, how much, uh, 
you know, is an hour for artwork time that you're typically taking? Um, how much is it typically taking on average for a screen setup, um, exposing the screen, cleaning the screen, and then also for cleanup and reclaiming? Uh, when it's this scenario, it's like typically some, we're spending an hour on total artwork, we're spending half an hour on setup, and we're spending a half an hour on cleaning, and then we're, we're printing, once we get on press, 80 shirts an hour. So manual shop. Now you're going to come over and put the job criteria in. So this job, um, total number of artwork hours, let's say it's two. Uh, total number of colors is two. Uh, total number of shirts, let's say it's 120. Um, and we're going to be using a guild in 2000. It's going to be a two-color distressed uh, mining bright futures, the name of the design. Uh, the cost of the garment is going to cost us one or two ten. And then the total job cost. So this gives us our total job cost, direct cost of the garment. So this is the supply cost plus the garment. Next, it's going to give us our total estimated time for the job. And it's also going to give us our P&L time for the job. So this is pretty cool because the total estimated time, meaning that this is out, out of our shop's job criteria right here. That's where this data is pulling from. But the P&L is what's actually happening. So the P&L shows us over all those hours, and these numbers are pretty close. Obviously, stuff happens. People look for supplies. You run out of stuff. They walk around the shop too much. But in this relative scenario, this is pretty close. And basically, if this is too far off, like if it says you should only be taking two, uh, two hours for this job, but your P&L really says it's supposed to be taking five hours for this job, oh my goodness, you're, something's wrong. So either you don't think your numbers are fast enough or something's off, some, somebody's wasting your time and your dollars. Total overhead for the job. So this is taking what your actual number of shirts, once again, by the overhead per shirt from right here and giving you your total overhead per job. So this is your total cost. This breaks it down by cost per shirt. If you wanted uh, to make 40%, then you would want to sell that for at least 538. So let's say we want to make 50%, 645. So this spits out a quotation over here, uh, 645. This is taxable. Put in a mock-up. Now, obviously, a lot of people have programs that do that for them, but this is just a simple tool that you could use in case you don't have a program. You'd want to put your logo name, everything here. Um, you would put your client's mock-up and then um, send it off. So that kind of gives you the job criteria and ensures that you're profitable for it. So for instance, if the client wants this job to be sold at, you know, three under three dollars and 23 cents there's no way you're going to be making money on it that's your minimum you're going to sell it for so yeah you could sell it uh for 10 percent profit and do it at 358 but why would you want to do that you want to try to be more profitable at that job so this kind of gives you all your costs so that you can then price the job effectively now once again everyone's different so if you're finding that your shop isn't profitable in the in, the, in this model, in your model, you have to change something. You have to be able to, to print more shirts per month. So maybe you add an automatic press and you add another person. So now you have another person doing it and you have two full-time people and you have one part-time person. So you have one, time, one person working 80 and they're kind of taking the, the burden away. But now you're able to print 12,000 shirts in that course of the month. And now your payroll definitely went up. So your payroll is now $7,000, um, your rent the same, your utilities is going up because you have uh, more equipment to fund with power and, and gas and whatnot. Your insurance is probably going to go up. Um, your equipment lease might go up a little bit, $1,250, maybe $1,500 because you have an automatic press um, and you might have some other overhead associated to that. Now you've almost doubled your income. You're doing $30,000 a month in screen print because you're focusing on it. It's costing you $15,000 a month in supplies to do it in. Obviously, you're probably printing a lot of more shirts, so $1,200 $1, in consumable. And kind of gives you that breakdown of scenario here. So now we can actually be a lot more competitive in pricing. So we look at that same job. So we are making... Our cost per shirt went down $3. So if you wanted to make 25% margin, we could actually sell that at roughly over $4, even at 40% margin, we could sell that for $5, whereas before it was way up in the $6 range. So as you increase your capacity, that's how you can actually lower your pricing in the market. Once again, every shop's different. So this shop's gonna be completely different than your shop. And you're gonna to wanna to understand your data by tracking it through a P&L. 
by splitting out your screen print direct costs by coming up with your job criteria and then by running jobs through that. And from here, you can actually take this a step further and create a your own pricing model that basically sums all this up and it tells your sales team, okay, for a Gildan 2000 two color shirt, it's gonna be this much for this many shirts because you have all these models built out. Now, obviously this is a very simple tool and if you invest in a system, a system that runs your shop, you're gonna be much better off because they're gonna do all this for you giving you most accurate P&Ls, giving you your job criteria, giving you more real data, automatically spitting out quotes. However, it is good to cross references, especially if your system isn't looking at it this way, because this looks at it specifically to the screen print way and how much it's costing you to make that garment as a percentage of your, of your business and your, of your overhead. So check out this once again at Made to Make It book on this, the resource guide or the exercises page right there, also on the link to this video. So thank you very much. Have a great day and stay tuned for more great vlogs on Made to Make It.